Hi there. In this video, I'll be showing how to create first person controllers using Unity's visual scripting, Bolt, and parallel to that, I'll be showing how it's done in C Sharp. And there's gonna be a lot of similarities, so you can see clear connection between visual scripting and C Sharp. In my previous Bolt tutorials, I was using human naming. So if you want to change that, you can go to Bolt Setup Wizard next. And here you have the option of human naming or program naming. And I'll switch to using programming naming for this tutorial so that there'll be a closer connection between C Sharp and Bolt. Without further delays, let's get started. The project I'm gonna use for demonstration is my Bolt RPG inventory. And the last tutorial that I did on it was adding this hunger bar at the bottom. So if you're interested in that, check out my previous videos. I still don't have a player in my game and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So let's go here and create an empty object. We'll call it player. And in first person game, the camera moves with the player. So we'll move the main camera inside the player. Let's reset the transform of our player. And also let's reset the transform of our camera. That positions our camera in the middle of the ground and that's not what we're looking for. So we still don't have a visual representation of our player. For our player, I'll use a capsule. So add a capsule that's a little bit big for my game. So I'll size it down to 0.5. That's better. Now I can move it up by 0.5 so that the capsule is above the ground. And last thing, I want to move up my camera closer to where the player's head is. So I'm over there. Now the capsule has a capsule collider there. We won't be needing that one. So let's go ahead and remove that component. Later on, we'll add a collider inside a player. So now that everything's configured here, let's start by moving our camera. So in uh, first person controls, usually you move your mouse of left and right to rotate the character and you can swipe up and down to view uh, what's up and what's down. So it's easier to rotate the camera left to right and we will start with that. So let's add a component, bolt, we'll use a flow machine and embedded graph and click added graph. I'm gonna go to full screen and we'll start by getting the mouse input. Now the mouse input that I'm gonna use is the get axis. So input dot get axis. And inside here we can pass in the axis name. Now the axis names are located in the project settings. You can go here and under input management, we have a list of old axes. So the horizontal vertical, we'll be using that for movement. And then we have mouse X and mouse Y for our mouse movement. And that's what we're gonna be using. So for our character to rotate left and right, we're gonna use mouse X. That's gonna be the X axis of the mouse movement. And the output that we get here is a delta. So a change of mouse position between the frames. The faster you move the mouse, the larger the number will be. So that's the mouse input that we're gonna use. Now, what we wanna change is the rotation. And we have an option for transform.rotate. And there is different options. And the one I'm interested in is in the axis angle. And this is what we're gonna use to rotate our player. So let's connect our flow. The axis that we're gonna be rotating around is the Y axis. So we'll set Y to one. And the angle, well, let's for now just connect it directly to the mouse X. Let's exit to full screen, click play. And this is how it looks right now. So you can see that I'm moving the mouse and the player is rotating. That's pretty cool. I'm not liking that I can see the cursor when I'm moving it around. And in Unity, you can go ahead Add a setting, so on start cursor dot lock state, and the option that we're looking for is locked. So that's the mode that we want the cursor to be in. If we click play now, we can see that we're no longer can see the cursor, but the movement is still a little bit too slow. I have to move the mouse by a lot to rotate it. So that's where the multiplier comes in. So inside here, between the Xc's input and the rotate, I want to add a multiplier. So I'll disconnect that. Let's add a multiply scalar and we can pass in the value here, 10. Now a common mistake that I've seen is that people also multiply by delta time. And in bold, the way you would do that is do a per second value. And when you use the per second, that also multiplies the delta time in here. 
and that is a wrong way to do it when you're using get access of the mouse position because the mouse position is between the frames. It does not matter how fast or slow your frame rate is. The delta is change in position between the frames, so it's not connected to the frame. So if you multiply it by the delta time, it actually will slow down your movement the faster frame rate the game will play at. So you don't want to do that. Leave it as is, and I'll set it to 10 connect that value to angle and we can preview and see how it looks now. So that feels that I have a little bit more sensitivity. That will work for me. You can adjust it to whatever you want or you can even go ahead and add an option for the player to adjust this value. You would just pass in your final sensitivity value inside here and that's going to create the movement as you like. So we're done with rotating our character left and right now. Let's rotate our camera up and down so we can look what's up and what's down. So in bold, what we can do is create a sequence. That way the blocks visually can be disconnected. And let's actually create a group, call it rotate left, right. And uh, that way we know what exactly is going on here. The next one is going to be rotate up and down. So we can go ahead and duplicate this logic right here, control D connect it to transform rotation. The mouse movement is in the Y direction. Also for the movement, I know it needs to be in the negative instead of 10, just how the mouse moves relative to the rotation that we want. Also the rotation axis isn't along the Y, but along the X axis. So we'll set one to X axis and zero to Y axis. And instead of uh, rotating our player, we need to rotate the camera. And for that, we need a camera. So inside here, we can click uh, this icon. Let's find it in our list, camera, main camera, and that should be good. So if we try running right now, we can see we can rotate up and down, side to side, but there is one issue with it is that we can rotate 360 up and down. We can see the world upside down and that's not what we want. So to fix that issue, we need to be able to limit our rotation. And for that, we can use a clamp. Because we need to use a clamp, we can't really use the rotate unit to rotate our camera. So we're gonna have to do a little bit more work. So let's remove that. And to clamp our rotation angle, we need to store the angle as a variable. So we'll create a new graph variable. Let's call it angle, click add. It's gonna be a float. We can add that here. We'll start it at zero. And after we multiply our input, we want to add it to a current angle. So let's connect to an add unit and connect it to the variable. After we add these together, we want to clamp it. So let's find clamp. And we have two options here. One is float and int. We'll use the float option. For our minimum, I'll set it to 60 and for our maximum to 16. You can go up to 90, but I'll just leave it at 60. After I clamp that value, I can save this value to my variable. So let's add that. By the way, you can hold Alt down to switch to set variable instead of get variable. Just a quick tip there. And I want to connect it to my sequence one, get the value from the clamp. We saved that. And now we need to set the rotation of our camera. So let's add a transform dot local rotation set and we'll use in the local rotation so that it wouldn't ignore the player rotation. So we'll connect that and now we need to connect our angle to a quaternion. So to do that we need to create a new vector 3. So new vec 3 and we're looking for the one with x, y, z. We're passing the value for x and now we need to convert this vector 3 to a quaternion. So we can do quaternion dot Euler and use that quaternion for a rotation. Also, don't forget that we're changing the rotation of the camera. So let's find our main camera, select it. By the way, I'm able to select the camera like that because I have an embedded graph and that allows me to access the transform and game objects inside of my scene. The other way of doing it is creating an object variable main camera and use that variable inside here. And inside the inspector, you can connect that variable to your main camera. Now let's test it out and see how it works. After that, we'll recreate this in C sharp. So there we go. We have it working and we also have the limits. Pretty cool. So first let's group this rotate up down and let's recreate this logic using C sharp. First, we'll go to the inspector 
add a component, create a new script called FB controller. So new script, FB controller, create add. We'll disable our flow machine so that the logic won't run. And now we can go and click edit script. So here's my new script file. And first thing there you can see that there's similarity. There's the start method and the update method, just like we have the start event and update event in Bolt. So the only thing that we did in the start was to set the cursor lock state to locked. So let's go ahead and do that in here as well. So cursor dot lock state and the value that it's gonna be equal to, you can click control space and it's gonna find the enum that it's looking for. So control lock mode dot and the mode that we're looking for is locked. So that's exactly the same thing that we did right here, the lock state. Pretty good. Now let's add the rotate left right logic. We'll do that in the update. And what we're looking for is transform dot rotate. And inside here, we can see all the options that are here. So this is the one that we used vector three axis and float angle. So the vector that we used was zero one zero. And there's a short way of doing that in C sharp, we can do vector dot up. And we can see that the value of vector dot up is vector zero one zero exactly what we're looking for. Then we put in the comma and pass in the angle. The angle was the input get axis mouse x multiplied by 10. So let's do the same thing in here, get the input dot get axis and the axis name is mouse x and we want to multiply it by 10. End it with a semicolon and we're done. We can save this script, go back to Unity, click run and that script should get us to move from left to right. You can see that I can now move left to right, but I can't move up and down because we disabled the bolt flow graph that was controlling that. So we just recreated one of the things with C sharp. Let's recreate the second portion of it. So for the second portion, we need a variable and a graph variable is equivalent to a private variable inside our class. So the type is float, we named it angle and the initial value was zero. And the first thing we did in Bolt was calculating and setting the new value for the angle. So we'll do exactly that inside here. I'll add a comment right here saying that this is a rotate right left. Now we're going to be rotating up and down. So we'll start by saying angle equals and how you go about writing this equation out is you go in reverse. If you look at the set variable, the first node that is connected to it is clamp. So that's what we want to do here. So math f dot clamp, we have the value. After that, we have negative 60 for the minimum and 60 for the maximum. We'll terminate that with a colon. And now let's calculate our value. So our value is connected to add, and we're adding the input multiplied by negative 10 and the angle. So let's get our input dot get axis. The axis that we're looking for is mouse y and we're multiplying it by negative 10 and adding the angle to it. Here we calculate the new value of the angle and now we need to use this angle and set it to our transform main camera. For that, we need a transform main camera and we can add that by setting public. The type that we're looking for is transform and we'll name it main camera. Now in Unity, when you use public, it shows this variable in our script in inspector and that's where we'll be able to connect the camera later on. But for now, we can use that variable main camera dot local rotation and we need to set it to a quaternion. So quaternion dot Euler and inside here we need our new vector. So let's create new vector three and pass in our values. So we'll use the angle as our X value and the other ones are zero, zero, just like we did in Bolt. So there you go. That's the second portion of it. Now we can click save and see if all of that is working like we expected. Before we run it, we need to go to inspector. Like I said, here's the variable main camera and currently it's set to none. So we can drop our main camera inside here and that will let our script access this camera. Click play. And here we go, our camera movement is working just like we expected. So that's pretty cool. Again, I'll repeat this if someone missed it. Inside here, when we're getting the input get axis, mouse axis, we're just multiplying by 10. Common mistake is multiplying also by time dot delta time. 
and that's actually wrong because if you do this the movement will actually slow down the faster rate you have the input get axis mouse x returns the change position of the mouse between the frames so you're not supposed to multiply it by delta time so we got our camera rotating just like in fps and the next step is getting our character to move and jump and that's what we're gonna do in the next video so if you found this video helpful, click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and tell me what you think about this video. Is this parallel bolt and C sharp useful for you guys, or is it just taking more time to get where you want to go? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.